You are listening to the It's Your Time podcast, and I'm your host, certified life coach, Michelle Arnold Burke. In today's episode, I'm discussing abundance and success. Welcome to the It's Your Time podcast, the podcast where busy professionals like you get the practical solutions and support you need to gain control of your schedule so you can strive to be the best in your career, but without the stress and overwhelm. If you're looking to increase your energy and decrease your stress, you are in the right place. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast, friends. Before we get too far into the episode, how are you doing today? Ask yourself that. Just check in. How are you doing? There's no right or wrong answer. Just think it's nice to see where you're at. A chance for you to acknowledge what is going on in your world. And you know how I love curiosity. It can give you so much insight as to what might be your next best step. So gift yourself that opportunity to check in on yourself. And happy St. Patrick's Day. May we all have the luck of the Irish, right? And along those lines, today I want to talk to you about luck, success, abundance, all the good stuff. This past weekend, I had vision board day with the nieces and my family, and it was so much fun. For those of you who might not be familiar with what that is, we set it up as a day to get together, take some magazines, think about what we want to create in life, cut out words and pictures that represent those things, and then create a board for the year, and present it to everyone that is there. It really is a great opportunity to remind ourselves of what some fun goals are that we have in life. And of course, you know, I had a beach on mine. Now, I want you to remember, our conscious mind is only about 5%. It's the subconscious that actually runs the show. So, Having the visuals over and over, having that vision board helps to plant the seed and allows us to get into the feelings that we want to generate, acting as if, acting as if we have already achieved the goals. And that's the first point that I want to make around abundance today. When we set a goal, whether it's on a vision board or something we have written down in our journal, We want to go to the place where we have already accomplished it and then work from the results. I know that sounds a little different than conventional thinking, right? We talk about working towards the results, but what I want to suggest is that you work from the results. So go there in your mind as your future self and think about how you will feel when you have that goal and take action from that space. We do not want to, for example, look at the vision board or a goal and think, I'm not going to be able to do that. We can just take a moment and go back to the basics of the think, feel, act cycle, or I've also sometimes referenced Brooke Castillo's The Thought Model. But basically, we have a thought, which creates a feeling, and our feelings drive our action. So let's break down two ways to look at this, and I'll use the example of having a beach house. If I have a thought like, we can't afford that, I am going to feel defeated. And if I'm feeling defeated, I'm likely not taking much action. In fact, I might just sit around feeling sorry for myself. That since I'm not really doing anything extra in order to earn money, we will not be able to afford it. And I'm not going to be able to afford it because that's what I'm thinking. Versus, let me show you the opposite. We still have the idea of the beach house, but now I'm going to be thinking from more of an abundance mindset. Something along the lines of, I'm going to figure this out no matter what, which has me feeling determined. And if I'm feeling determined, I'm going to try new things, go the extra mile, be open to new ideas, ask for help, delegate, and eventually... As I keep going and keep telling myself, I will figure this out, I will figure this out, my abundance mindset is going to open up way more possibilities versus the scarcity mindset where we focus on 
lack. And we might also focus on things like comparing, worry, jealousy, which as a side note, they do not tend to feel so good. And it's all optional. It's all optional in the way we think about it. So when we are in abundance mindset, we believe there is enough. I am doing enough. We can be thankful for what it is that we have and want to continue to do more versus thinking we have to do more in order to be enough. Can you see the difference there? Knowing that you're enough and just wanting more can make your life magic versus thinking that you have to continue doing all of the things in order to be enough. And I recall an example when we're talking about scarcity mindset um, from work years ago, there was a doctor who called two companies in by mistake for a patient and the other rep was so angry, insisting that that was her patient. And I thought, there are so many patients in this world for us to help why are we not focused on how can we create more opportunities to help patients? So think about that for you. How do you frame what you have going on in your life? Knowing that you have the power to do that. You have the power to frame all of the ways that you think about what is going on in your life. And you can decide to change your life. And listen, I'm still guilty of this at times too. Just the other night we had a dinner program and some folks canceled the day off and I caught myself being bummed about those that were not able to attend versus focusing on the room full of folks that were there. And I've talked about this idea even around weight loss in the past. Let's say you want to lose 10 pounds and you lose eight. Pay attention to what you focus on. A lot of times we beat ourselves up for the two pounds that were missed versus celebrating our eight pounds lost. So focus on the areas where you see yourself growing. What you focus on, you get more of. And money is another big example of abundance versus scarcity mindset thinking. Think about all the ways that we talk about money. For example, it's the root of all evil or money doesn't grow on trees, which by the way, I just want to let my dad know it actually does, right? It's paper. It's printed out just as the government wishes. It's not like I get mine and that takes from you. Money is all around. And that is a thought that you can try on for yourself. Many of us think that we don't want to have too much of it. But question that. Good people with money can do a lot of good things. So take some time to consider for yourself Do you focus on lack or do you focus on possibilities? Consider if you are happy for others when they succeed or does it elicit a different feeling, something more like resentment or jealousy because you are the one feeling the feeling. Do you want to feel happy for them or angry and resentful? Because that feeling is what you feel and remember your feelings will drive your actions. So some other things to consider if you're looking to build more of an abundance mindset is what does your mental diet look like? Meaning, what are you putting in your brain? Are you watching the news every day and hearing negative messages? Or are you on social media just aimlessly scrolling? It all plays into it. Be intentional. What you allow into your brain is very precious information. And of course, gratitude is always a key to this. What do you already have that you are grateful for? Remind yourself of those things you once prayed for that you now have. Remind yourself where you worked for a goal that you have now accomplished. Remind yourself about the differences you are making in other people's lives right now. And speaking of goals and making differences, let's talk about what success looks like. First, keeping in line with St. Patrick's Day, I looked up the definition of luck, which reads, success or failure apparently brought by chance, not 
one's own actions. And it's interesting because I even question if we might not realize the actions that we actually did take that put us in the position to be quote unquote lucky. Because back to the 95% subconscious thinking, maybe we just didn't even realize what we did to bring it all about. Just something interesting to consider. But the main point I want to discuss around success today is you get to decide what that looks like for you. Did you hear me there? You get to decide what success looks like for you and at every chapter in your life, meaning it can change and that's okay. So often we look to external sources to determine our level of success. Being successful, of course, means achievement of a desired vision or planned goal, according to the dictionary. And that means that your vision is what needs to be known in order to know what success looks like. You need to know what that is. You must, because when we think success comes from something outside of us, maybe it's what other people say or do, we are always chasing that. And most times, we might even have folks that tell us that's a great job and we don't believe them. We discount it. We just think, oh, they're being nice. But that's because we don't know what we consider success. We have no measurement to say, yes, that was successful. Thank you very much. So get clear over the next couple of days. Take this as your week's homework. What is your desire? Really think about that. That can be a tough question. What do you want in life? Because so often we're looking to do for others. But give yourself this opportunity. How would you answer that question? What do you most desire in life? And while you're at it, answer the question or answer the statement here. I know I'm successful when dot, dot, dot. Fill that in. Is it, I know I'm successful when I can come home and leave work at the door? Is it when I get a promotion? Is it when I start that new habit that I said I was going to start New Year's Eve? Is it finding more efficient ways to work so that you can enjoy your life? By the way, it's totally my jam. If you need help being more efficient at work so that you can excel in your career, but without the stress and overwhelm, so you can do more of what you want, we should totally talk. Send me a DM, send me a message on the socials. Let's connect. It can be super easy. I'll put links in the show notes as well, but you know the socials at Michelle Burke Coaching. So think about it. What is success for you? In order to know the answer, you have to give yourself this time to think and don't tell yourself that you don't have time. Schedule it. You do have time. Remember the name of the podcast? It's your time. That means you are in control of it. Such a great thing to know, especially from control enthusiasts like ourselves, right? So put the time on the calendar to dream. And I know it sounds crazy maybe, but as kids, we did it. We imagined and we dreamed about going to high school, getting into college, maybe finding a mate and maybe having a baby or getting a house or that job that you wanted. And then what happened? Most folks stop there, but there is still more. There is so much more potential in the world for you. Gift yourself the time to think about what that looks like for you. And then consider it good as done. And then get after it. Okay, friends, that's what I have for you today. Let's circle back next week. But for now, Make it a great day. Take care. Did you know you can take this work to a deeper level with me one-on-one? Go to michelleburkcoaching.com and click on Get Started to Begin.